What's up fuckers? Terry here from Blunt Trips and for today's video I'm gonna roll it back. I'm gonna take it back to my very first video. Um, it has nothing to do with me being lazy. Uh, the first time I released this Google deemed it too shocking for advertising so I'm gonna go ahead and edit it and put it back out there for you guys and hope you guys like it. Um, the reason why it has to be re-edited is because during the filming, uh, I had a confrontation with two of the residents that lived in the apartment building where James Holmes lived. And when I was on location, they came out and tried to confront me. And uh, I called them a pussy fart. And because I did that, it was deemed too shocking. So, with that said, um, I've edited it out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and re-release re this video for you guys. I'm going to smoke this blunt. And let you guys watch it. But remember, if you haven't liked and subscribed, be sure to do so. I need the love. I need my numbers up. And you guys are helping me out a lot by doing the clicks. Keep it coming. Alright, well, until next time, stay cool fuckers and enjoy this video. What's up, fuckers? I am Terry and you are watching Blunt Trips. Tonight we are at the location where James Holmes shot and killed 12 people and uh, wounded 70 others on the night of June 12, 2012. We're at the Century Theater in Aurora, Colorado. It's, uh, I chose nighttime to give you a better idea of what it was like the night when he started shooting. And uh, I picked this as my uh, location to shoot for my very first one. For this channel because this one's three miles from where I live. Um, living in Colorado there's a lot of crimes but uh, this one was the closest. I will be covering a lot of other ones but uh, like I said uh, when it hits close to home uh, I guess you tend to pay attention to it a lot more. Anyways here we are Central Theater in Aurora Colorado and uh, let me show you around. Now the theater has been closed for about a year now due to COVID. Um, I think they just recently opened back up or are about to. It looks like there's some movie posters on the wall. But um, this is where it happened. He uh, came in there and started blasting people. And uh, like I said, he killed 12. And... Uh, wounded 70 and for those that lived here in Aurora I'm sure uh, they remember that night real well I will be covering the back of the theater where he went in um, as well as shooting locations at his house and the show the hospital he worked at um, his home is actually less than two blocks from where I live. I live on one side of the hospital which he worked at. He lives on the opposite side of the hospital. Literally walking there would take me I think it said 19 minutes when I mapped it and this place driving here took me seven minutes. That's how close this place is. So that's why I chose this as my first uh, location to shoot for this channel. Like I said, I'm not sure if this theater is open right now due to the COVID. Let's see here. Oh, it looks like they are open. We got hours posted. But, uh, can't really see it's dark, but that's, uh, I'm sure anybody that watched the videos on YouTube remembers that popcorn stand. People jumping over when the shots started being fired right there. I've yet to get in this theater. I've that was one of the things I wanted to do when I moved here a year ago was actually get into this theater and go see a movie in theater 19. But uh, right after I got here, COVID hit, so that put a damper on that. But I will get in there eventually, living so close. There's the other side of the theater here. This would be the half that um, the Dark Knight was shooting on, but it was on the back half of this theater. 
And uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Aurora, but uh, if you haven't, it's a beautiful city. I um, remember when I first got to Colorado, I moved to the Springs, but I pointed at the map and I said, I'm going to be in Aurora one day. And three years later, I got to be in this beautiful city. But anyways, there's the front of the movie theater where the Dark Knight shooting happened. Um, James Holm is now convicted and in prison. I believe it was in 2015. He was convicted of many counts of many crimes. And, um, I think I'm about to wrap this up up here on the front because this is Colorado. It is a tail in the winter. And I'm fucking freezing out here, to be honest with you. And, uh, I don't want to shrivel up to average white boy status, so let me go ahead and wrap up the front here and um, get the back covered, and then when it's daylight, I'll come get another shot of it, but you could probably find many of people on YouTube that got daylight shots, um, but this, to my knowledge, will be the only one where somebody covered it at night. It's not a news source anyways. I may be wrong, I haven't checked, I, I got better things to do with my time, but uh, either way, I will get a day shot of it, as well as other locations um, James Holmes was associated with, including his home and the hospital he worked at. But for now, I am Terry, and you are watching Blunt Trips, and thank you for checking out my channel. Here we are in the back of the Century Theater, um, where the, my car is parked there, is right where um, James Holmes uh, parked his car. And uh, what he did was, parked his car and he went into the theater and paid to get in and uh, just as the lights went down, he pretended he had an emergency call, and he came out this door. Door to Theater 19. That's the door right there he came out of. He walked right over here. It's maybe 20 steps tops from the door to where he was parked, where my car is parked. He grabbed his guns. And he went right back into this theater right here, back into this door he had propped open, and he started shooting. And he was merciless. He treated like it was the fucking streets of Miami back in the 90s. But that's where he parked. Now, the thing is, is he wouldn't have had much trouble parking by that door, I imagine. Even at that movie being um, what it is on the release, because... This is the back of the theater. There's the end of the building down there. And it's almost to the very end of the parking lot. Almost to the very end. So literally, I don't know if he knew the movie was playing in that theater right there or what, but he had the closest spot to the door that night for a, a movie that big. Um... And the crazy part is, is when he came out of that door, he uh, walked back two walked by two police officers, and um, walked over to his car and put his guns on the car. The police officers walked right past him, past this dumpster area, assuming he was part of the SWAT team. Now during that time, James Holmes said he had thought about shooting the police officers, but he was afraid of being killed. But he could have easily dropped two officers right back here, right here by the dumpster. But there you have it. This is the area where he went in and started shooting. Theater 19. And there's a staircase going up to the top of it. 
But no security cameras, nothing here. Nothing. There's no security cameras. No kind of warning whatsoever. But it's crazy how he got the very closest spot to that door the night, the release of the Dark Knight. Of, I mean, that place would have been packed, but uh, the only thing I'm thinking he got it for is because it's at the back of the theater, like I said, and uh, there's only maybe seven more spots, tops. Actually, it looks like only six more spots, but that's where he was parked. So there you have it. There's the back side. That's where he came out and went back in with the weapons and started shooting. Now I'm shooting from this location right here, right by this roadway between the movie theater there and the mall. Because you may have noticed how long it took for the police to get there the night of the shooting. Um, and it didn't take long at all. Now... The reason why I'm shooting here is because at that mall there is a police substation in there as well as if you follow this road down here 1.1 mile from this location there is a main police station the Aurora Police Department um, which is at center point um, so it shouldn't have taken the police no longer than three minutes to rush this place actually less than that considering the mall is right there I can run to that mall from that door right there to the mall, I can literally run it in probably 90 seconds uh, it would take me to get there. So um, that's how close they were uh, to the movie theater, the police. They were that close to the movie theater. See if I can zoom in and give you an idea. It's right there in that building. Of course, the movie theater is a little bit, or not the movie theater, the police substation in that mall is a little bit further back. Now, the mall was closed. It was a midnight premiere, from my understanding. But I also understand that there is um, police inside the, the substation at all times. That substation is constantly uh, manned with at least one or two police officers. Anyways, I just wanted to get this location here so that you you see why it is it took so little time, or as the amount of time it took uh, for the police to get to that uh, movie theater uh, the night of that shooting um, also before I forget um, somewhere around the side or bottom of the screen I'm not sure I don't watch a whole lot of YouTube but there's a like and subscribe button be sure to click that uh, other than that um, let's move on to the back side What's up, people? Terry here with Blunt Trips, and as I promised, I told you that uh, I would get video of his apartment, and uh, there we are, right up there on the top third floor. Um, is where he stayed. Uh, I suppose that apartment was full of um, bombs and stuff. He filled the room with bombs and all kinds of stuff. So there it is, folks. Um, as promised, there's a 1690 Paris Street, and that's where James Holmes lived, the Dark Knight shooter. Um, up there in the top corner would be his apartment, where he lives, apartment number 10. Um, of course, they keep the door locked all the time, and I was actually out here earlier and had to move my car. Because a bunch of people came out and got hostile with me. I was about to have to get in a fight with them. Uh, but I moved my car and uh, I got the video nonetheless. Anyways, there's the video footage of it. And uh, that's where everything went down. That's where he plans everything.
to his apartment in number 10. Right up there. He worked that right over there. All right, folks. Terry here with Blunt Trips. Uh, as promised, there's a, a day shot of the theater where the Dark Knight sh shooting massacre took place. Um, I already pretty much covered all the details, so I just wanted to get this one last shot in up in front of the theater. And remember, if you haven't liked and subscribed, uh, be sure to do so. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for me. Uh, till the next video, y'all stay cool.